Well guys, here we are again, another weekend vlog. And what do you know, I'm getting ready to wash my face because that's how I start my morning. Actually, I just went for a walk. I like to get a little movement first thing in the morning. Whew, that water is chilly. Pleasant surprise because in the summer, it's so hot here that you can't really get cold water out of the pipes. Let's come on in with a little soothing barrier support serum from The Ordinary. I'm about close to halfway finished with this. It's a girl! <laughs> yeah, between this and their copper peptide serum, it's like a gender reveal. <laughs> this product kind of has a funky aroma to it. A little earthy. I don't know if it's something about the emollients in it or what. Let me know if you have tried it. I do take it around my eyes too. It's all absorbed and dry on there and I have to say like it does kind of give the skin a little hydrated glow. Not the best thing I've ever used but it, it does what it claims to do. It soothes, it supports, it has that B12 in there for calming down itch. But speaking of the skin barrier, sunscreen can help your skin barrier tremendously because UV actually weakens the barrier proteins and lipids, and also sunscreens are in a moisturizing base that helps protect the skin and allow for barrier recovery. Comment below, do you live somewhere that's getting snow right now? Gosh, not something I envy, um, but sun can reflect off of the snow and be, you know, reflected back onto your skin. You definitely need sunscreen in the snow in the winter time. Even, even if it's cloudy, you're still getting quite a bit of UV exposure, especially if it's snow. And especially if you are at altitude, like it's a little too early for skiing, but you got those UV filters in there that are absorbing the UV, keeping it from weakening your collagen and also helping with dark spots, redness, So in yesterday's vlog, I mentioned to you guys, I downloaded a new audiobook after finishing Crossroads, which I rather enjoyed, although I don't know, the ending kind of left me like, eh. So the new book is called Wellness, and it's written by the same author, I'm blanking on their name, that wrote The Knicks, which is a book I read a couple of years ago, and I mentioned in yesterday's vlog, so it's about this married couple, and you know, they now have a child. And it's there there's this one part that I've I've gone through um in the book where the guy um you know he's kind of reaching I guess middle age and he realizes that you know he, he needs to start taking exercise a little bit more seriously. So he goes on the Google rabbit hole of like how to how do I um I think he puts in how to get rid of stubborn belly fat. And the next thing he knows, he's like down this rabbit hole of how to grow your biceps. And he goes down one path on Google and gets all this information, tries doing that, and then goes back to Google, finds out that everything he learned was wrong and that he should be doing this. And so he tries doing that. It leads him to this other thing that tries to convince him that he needs all these protein powders. Next thing he knows, he's like, doing this bizarre thing where he's got this trackable device that like has all these metrics in it which are absurd like that are just tracking all of this data the other thing that has me cracking up um was i was telling you guys in yesterday's video about how yesterday's vlog about how they were buying a house and our condo or whatever and the realtor oh my gosh there's a scene with the realtor um, it's trying to sell them and it's so funny because they talk about and I have felt this way for the longest time That phrase your forever home. It's basically just some marketing thing to try and convince you that you need like for example If you are buying a home that you really should you know have all of these certain upgrades and really make sure that you have X Y and Z in the house because of course it's gonna be your forever home when it's just a way to sell you on things that you probably don't need and the, the, the funniest thing too is like there's, there's this part about it where the realtor and the wife are trying to convince the husband that they should buy a house that has 
two master bedrooms so that in theory, if their marriage falls apart and they end up having to sleep in separate bedrooms, well, it's already built into the house. <laughs> it's like, wow. Now I realize you just saw me put sunscreen on, but I'm gonna put my makeup on and I find that using a little tinted sunscreen strategically, um, this is that e.l.f. Whoa, glow I shared with you guys last weekend. I find using a little tinted sunscreen strategically kind of uh, helps with the makeup adherence, but also just a little bit of complexion correction. Now, obviously I would not be putting this on so sparsely if this were the only sunscreen I had on. The other part about the book that so far has been a blast from the past is there the guys talking about how their older neighborhood uh, this coffee shop they really like got taken over and was this, um, the uh, filming location for the real world. And that is something that I had just put out of my brain. Who remembers the real world? That was like one of the first reality TV shows to exist. The real world, um, I, I wasn't like super into it, but I would catch episodes here and there. And I remember at the time feeling like anything, any, any of the episodes that I watched, I remember feeling like it was so vulgar and the people were so trashy, but it would be funny to go back and watch it now and see if I think it's as lewd and crude as I did back then, because now like the, the rheostat has completely shifted on what is considered like socially acceptable and disgusting that, I don't know, they probably come across as like, you know, super wholesome. <laughs> Today I'm gonna to use my Urban Decay Naked 2 Basics palette. But yeah, I just really relate to a lot of this book, the guy in particular. And the woman, the wife, I feel like she's a type of person that is overly worried about every little thing, at the same time being clueless about the things that actually matter. You know, before I was on YouTube, I went through periods in my life, especially when I was like in my early 20s and when I was, um, you know, in college where I wore makeup. And obviously I had to wear a lot of makeup when I was a ballet dancer. A lot of makeup would seriously irritate my eczema. Um, but the funniest thing I think looking back is I never used any makeup brush. I always just used whatever the heck came in the makeup compact because back then I didn't have YouTube or anything of that sort. So I didn't even know that makeup brushes were a thing. I thought you just had to use the sponge that came with the makeup. <laughs> yeah, I remember I had like those little sponges, those triangle, triangular sponges for the foundation I had to wear for ballet. And I would always get like this horrible contact dermatitis. I don't know what what it was that I was using back then as far as a foundation. But I remember having like this horrific irritant contact dermatitis all over my face. I pointed this out yesterday, but this Milani Conceal and Perfect, I rather enjoy this. All right, now I'm coming in with my NARS Orgasm Blush. Don't need very much of this. <laughs> I like to use the translucent powder. This is the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder. Mascara, Lancome Lash Idole. Then to match my blush is the NARS Lip Balm. What type of, the Afterglow. These I really like. They're very moisturizing and fragrance free, flavorant free. This perfume, I love. <laughs> Worth every penny. Looks like the weather is turning out to be a lot nicer than it was yesterday, so I may go out later on and run some errands, as cozy as it is in here though. That's the thing, the Christmas decorations, when I am home, it makes me like not wanna leave the home because I just wanna be with my glittery lanterns. And check it out, they have a snow globe. I'm so into these, um, with the cardinals. They also have this, what is it? This plays music, I just don't have it on the music setting. 
Oh, he lights up. The Santa's workshop one is pretty cute. Man, Walgreens has some cute little Christmas doodads. I don't know how I feel about that though. The gingerbread man slash nutcracker, eh, it's too much. Why is this skiing? Is that a little polar bear slash nutcracker? I don't know about that. Now he's sweet. Oh well, well, Yankee Candle has a holiday gift set here at Walgreens, $24.99. I wonder how those scents are. Hot dog ornament. This is kind of cute. This hot cocoa. Oh, snow globe ornament too. What in the heck is this? Coca-Cola fishing rod? I'm confused. What is the purpose of this? Just to play around with? The toy? Odd. Well, I just finished up in Walgreens and I'm out here in the parking lot and I see they still have a red box. And I have fond memories of like 15 years ago, I guess at this point, going on Friday nights, Saturday nights, and picking out a red box. Like that was, that was a lot of fun. Once Blockbuster phased out and then red box came in, it was supposed to be a good time. Um, I haven't gotten one in a long time because I don't even have a DVD player. Like my laptop, someone was like, play movies on your laptop. My laptop doesn't have a CD drive, a disc drive. It's, it's one of those things like, you know, Apple took away from me, <laughs> from us. Yeah, it's like, the other day I was thinking to myself, do I have a cigarette lighter in my car? Because they're handy for, I wanted to get a phone charger. I was looking around in my car thinking like, did they do away with cigarette lighters? But it's in, it's in this glove compartment thing. Like that goes to show how much I pay attention to that kind of thing. But yeah, like a lot of, I wanted to get a, a charging cord for like my phone for in the car. And they usually plug into the cigarette lighter. I wonder if younger generations even call it a cigarette lighter. Like this is something, let me know in the comments because I don't see people, I mean, I know people obviously still smoke in their car, but the concept of a cigarette lighter just seems so 1996, <laughs> right? I don't know. I mean, obviously people smoke, but like it just, it does, it seems like definitely an afterthought when it comes to designing like I don't think this car has an ashtray um what was I I was watching something the other day and somebody was like here's how you can tell if you're old if you can tell what this is and it was an ashtray <laughs> I guess that means I'm old I don't know but I mean that's a that's a good thing to to not have grown up around I suppose uh, all the secondhand smoke and I was thinking to myself did the real world kind of ruin MTV? I feel like, do music videos even exist anymore? I'm having like this exist, exist, but I'm having, it's hard to say existential while this is vibrating on my neck. I'm having an existential crisis surrounding like things that once were and seem to no longer exist. Uh, I think this book has gotten in my head a little bit too much. I'm kind of uptight if you guys couldn't figure that out. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not uptight in the sense of like, I'm hard to be around, but I do carry a lot of stress in my upper shoulders. I always have, like ever since I was a child. In fact, when I was a ballet dancer, that was the constant, I would constantly get, that was a constant feedback that I always got from my um, teachers is like, you need to relax your upper shoulders. I just carry so much tension. Like I'm a lot better than I was back then. Like, um, but yeah, I carry a lot of tension there. I don't deal with any any sort of back, I don't deal with any pain, period. Like I, I don't deal with any pain whatsoever. And chronic back pain is so common. It's really common. A lot of people deal with it. I thank my lucky stars every day that I don't have any pain, let alone back pain, which a lot of people deal with. Um, because so many people deal with chronic pain on, on the regular, especially lower back pain. Like it's one of the most frequent causes 
of lost days off of work is lower back pain. Um, it can be really, really debilitating. Like physical therapy and you know better posture and, and the like, I know it's kind of the starting point with m most t types of mechanical lower back pain, but it's definitely something a lot of people deal with. So recent Amazon acquisition that I have been really happy with is this collapsible TV table. It's perfect for um, crafts and it's a really sturdy material. Like I was thinking it might be rickety, but it's pretty sturdy. So if you're someone who likes to sit and do crafts, which I would love to do, I just don't really have the time to do crafts much anymore, sadly, yeah, I got this little table because I always end up with stuff that I need to set up or have out, and I never really have many surfaces to put things on, but then I don't want a lot of clutter. So I went ahead and got this, and I'm really happy with it. It collapses so I can get it out of the way if I need to. Um, yeah, this was a Amazon win. So I just spent that time decluttering my sock drawer, you know, to make room for stuff, and wouldn't you know it, I get it in my head that I have to hold on to these because the crafter in me, which I don't have time to do crafts these days, but whatever. The crafter in me is like, oh, these would be really cute. I mean, like you could do something with these craft project wise. Like I almost see them as like you could paint a little snowman face on these. Wh why would I need to do that? I don't know, but it seems like you could get a lot of use out of these. It seems like there's something that these would be useful for. This is really nice cardstock, cardboard. And I don't know, maybe you could make like a decorative bookmarks or something. There's definitely reuse potential in this. So I'm gonna stick it in my <laughs> ottoman of gift wrap, <laughs> gift wrapping supplies. So, so I've had this tripod where you can put your phone in the tripod, you know, to do whatever, whatever, but it just broke on me, which is disappointing. Um, that being said, this thing has always like accidentally pinched my fingers, but yeah, and now that it's, and now that this thing is broken off, I don't know if it's usable anymore at all. Maybe I could glue this back on. It's frustrating. Things are just not made to last. It's very annoying. Well, hey guys, I just hopped out of the shower and I'm coming in with the Cetaphil Healthy Renew Night Cream. The drugstore is really bringing ingredient packages that once were only available in the air quotes medical grade skincare, which is just a marketing term, the more expensive brands. I'm coming in with the Ceramide Lip Butter. I've rather been enjoying this. Is it the best lip balm product I've ever used? No, but it's pretty nice. Hasn't irritated my lips like that um, inky list lip plumper. So today I filmed a video for you guys. Hopefully it's up by the time you're watching this on this TikTok trend of using these single use disposable washcloths to basically dry your face. And you know, long story short, that is definitely not necessary. But um, a lot of people who have atopic dermatitis because the skin barrier is impaired, it's prone to becoming colonized with staph bacteria and you can get impetigo. And washing your linens regularly is super important for not transmitting that bacteria. You know, if you've got, if you've got staph skin infection, whether it be impetigo or staph folliculitis, you want to be super aggressive with laundering your linens because you can you know, transfer that to other body surfaces as well as to people who live with you. For me personally, I don't really use towels. You see me use a towel in my videos because it's inappropriate for me to not use a towel, but I gen genuinely don't really need to use a towel because I get out of the shower, most of the water drips off of me while I'm standing in the shower. Um, I put my hair up in that aqueous microfiber towel. I wring it out first and then I put my hair in the microfiber towel. By the time I get that thing on my head, um, most of the water has dripped off my body. I step out of the shower and yeah, my skin is still damp. I start putting moisturizer on the next thing you know, my skin is dry <laughs> and that's it. You don't have to, you don't necessarily have to use a towel. I started doing that when I lived in New York because it was so expensive to do laundry there um, that I was like, I'm gonna try 
see if I can go without using a towel. And I got really hooked on doing that. And that was my jam for a while because like I said, it was really expensive to do laundry and kind of, it was expensive and a pain because I didn't have like, a washer or dryer in my apartment. I had to go to the laundry room in the building I lived, at, lived in. And it was not only expensive, but just like a pain. She kind of had to sit there and babysit and come back. I was just, yeah. That I don't enjoy. I love having a washing washing machine in my apartment, and not having to share one. <laughs> anyway, y'all, I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here. Thank you so much for making it to the end. I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>